Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So let me say, and I love you back. And I love you back. So let me say, my heart is full today. My heart is full today, full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me, full of love for our country, and full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, not what we fought for, not what we voted for, but hear me when I say, hear me when I say, the light of America's promise will always burn bright. Optimism, positivity, we love it. As long as we never give up and as long as we keep fighting. Okay, our girl need a lozenge. Like, it seems like her voice is going out, which, you know, it's, it's hard. To my beloved Doug and our family, I love you so very much. We love him. To President Biden and Dr. Biden, thank you for your faith and support. To Governor, to Governor Walls and the Walls family, I know your service to our nation will continue. And to my extraordinary team, to the volunteers who gave so much of themselves, to the poll workers and the local election officials, I thank you, I thank you all. Look, I am so proud of the race we ran and the way we ran it, and the way we ran mm. it. Over the 107 days of this campaign, we have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background, united by love of country, with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. And we did it with the knowledge that we all have so much more in common than what separates us. Now I know folks are feeling and experiencing a range of emotions right now. I get it. <laughs> But we must accept the results of this election. Mm. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition, and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. As they should, as they should. A fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. And anyone who seeks the public trust must honor it. Hmm. At the same time, in our nation, we owe loyalty not to a president or a party, but to the Constitution of the United States. Okay, very American, very American, USA, USA. And loyalty to our conscience and to our God. My allegiance to all three is why I am here to say, while I concede this election, I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. The fight, the fight for freedom, for opportunity, for fairness, and the dignity of all people. A fight for the ideals at the heart of our nation the ideals that reflect America at our best. That is a fight I will never give up. I will never give up 
the fight for a future where Americans can pursue their dreams, ambitions, and aspirations, where the women of America have the freedom to make decisions about their own body and not have their government telling them what to do. Let's go, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We will never give up the fight to protect our schools and our streets from gun violence. And America, we will never give up the fight for our democracy, for the rule of law, for equal justice, and for the sacred idea that every one of us, no matter who we are or where we start out, has certain fundamental rights and freedoms that must be respected and upheld. Mm. Okay, okay. Very solid speech, very straightforward. And we will continue to wage this fight in the voting booth, in the courts, okay. and in the public square. And we will also wage it in quieter ways, hmm. in how we live our lives, by True. treating one another with kindness and respect. Yes, ma'am. By looking in the face of a stranger and seeing a neighbor, by always using our strength to lift people up, to fight for the dignity that all people deserve. The fight for our freedom will take hard work, but like I always say, we like hard work. Hard work is good work. Mm -hmm, hard mm -hmm. work can be joyful work. And the fight for our country is always worth it. It is always worth it. <laughs> to the young people who are watching, it is... <laughs> I love you. I mean, this is a pretty normal run-of-the-mill speech, right? To the young people who are watching, it is good. okay to feel sad and disappointed. Mm -hmm. But please know it's gonna be okay. On the campaign, I would often say, when we fight, we win. But here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes the fight takes a while. It does. That doesn't mean we won't win. That doesn't mean we won't win. It just sounds like she's a little bit the of a The important thing is don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop trying to make the world a better place. You have power. You have power. And don't you ever listen when anyone tells you something is impossible because it has never been done before. Important. Important. I think this is good for people. You have the capacity to do extraordinary good in the world. And so to everyone who is watching, do not despair. This is not a time to throw up our hands. This is a time to roll up our sleeves. Exactly. Yo, she saw my speech earlier, bro. She took me word for word. This is a time <laughs> to organize, to mobilize, and to stay engaged for the sake of freedom and justice and the future that we all know we can build together. Look, many of you know I started out as a prosecutor and throughout my career I saw people at some of the worst times in their lives. People who had suffered great harm and great pain and yet found within themselves the strength and the courage and the resolve to take the stand, to take a stand, to fight for justice, to fight for themselves, to fight for others. So let their courage be our inspiration. Let their determination be our charge. And I'll close with this. Oh, very There's quick. There's an adage and historian once called a law of history. True of every society across the ages. 
The adage is, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. I know many people feel like we are entering a dark time, but for the benefit of us all, I hope that is not the case. But here's the thing, America, if it is, let us fill the sky with the light of a brilliant, brilliant billion of stars. The light, the light of optimism, of faith, of truth, and service. Mm. H -U. <laughs> and may that work guide us, even in the face of setbacks, toward the extraordinary promise of the United States of America. I thank you all. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. I thank you all. Be Palestine. You can't do that. It's too political. Okay. Good speech. Straightforward. Within reason. Remember the world doesn't revolve around you and progressive politics because America is racist and misogynistic. Of course they voted for the white man who raped somebody. Allegedly. Of course they're not going to vote for the black Indian woman. But that's not even the point. The point is we're one step closer. And that's how life works. We are living history and we're one step closer. One day we had slaves. The next day we didn't have slaves, but it didn't happen overnight. And it certainly happened one day at a time. Okay. Women couldn't vote. Then women could vote. You think that happened overnight? No. In the same way that nothing happens overnight, not a change in your heart or a change in the system. One step closer is all we care about. When we're having these conversations and we're wondering why politicians make politicians speeches because they're politicians. That's what they do. That are supposed to feel good to more than just you. At the end, if she had said free Palestine, would have been fire, right? But what would that have done for our ally and our commitment to like our allies globally? Like what would that have done? Who knows? Maybe she's not ready. Maybe it's not her time. Politics is more than just your thing getting pushed. And everyone feels bummed after somebody makes a speech like, why didn't they talk about my group? Because it's not about you. It's about us. So... Keep fighting for what you specifically want to fight for, right? I think that's really important. Keep fighting for what you think is right. Keep pushing what you need pushed. But remember, there's an us before there's a you. And the us moves a lot slower than the you. So that's why I say in your personal life, focus on the you. And in community efforts, you have to focus on the us. So you can move faster than the us, but you can't make the us move faster than the you. It doesn't happen that way. You will always be more self-aware as an individual than communities will be as, as a collective. This is like the hardest part for people to recognize. And I think she ran a really great campaign for it to be only three months long. I think she killed it on the internet. I think her, her team was amazing. I'm so surprised there was 12 million people that didn't, didn't come out and vote this time around since we had such a huge increase of registered voters. Um, kind of disappointed in those people, but also as Americans, we have the right to exercise our right to vote or not. That's kind of why we're free. Not literally, I'm saying this politically. We're allowed to have an option of whether or not we participate. Kind of a disappointment in some ways, but who knows? Those 12 million people could have, cut out, could have come out and voted for Trump anyways. We do not know what they would have chosen to do. You know, but we are a part of history. You are living in a time that is so powerful. And yes, to be optimistic, we will have another woman. Once again, we will have a female president in this country. It is a simple matter of time. And it starts by being... A participant in your community to the best of your ability. It's about moving hearts slowly day by day. Because realistically, conservative women, they think of themselves as capable. But I'm not sure that they think of themselves as capable enough to contend with the men in their lives. And that's, that's, that's where, that's hard to dismantle is what I'm trying. It's hard to deconstruct that. Right? It's hard to deconstruct that I feel confident as a woman. So why don't I feel confident enough with the men in my life? Probably because you haven't gone to therapy or deconstructed. I hear from women all the time like, oh, women don't want to be in charge. Like, I'd rather have a man do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, it's not because you're a woman. It's just because of you. That has nothing to do with your gender. So when people get out here and they think like Kamala's got to get her period and she's going to cause problems globally, or people think like, oh, women don't want to be leaders. It's not that women don't want to be leaders. 
is that people who happen to be women are making choices, usually based off culture, to maybe not engage in these ways. And or when men contend against one another, the misogyny might be too much at the time. And that's why it does take a very specific kind of person to sit in a room full of men, to be the only woman there, and more than that, to be the only woman of color there who's supposed to sit there and get piled on by these groups of men and then still manage to come to work every day. Yeah, most people aren't going to choose to be that woman. Not because women don't want to be leaders, but because unlike the men coming into those rooms, they're not getting piled on the way women are because they don't suffer from misogyny. And women aren't in charge enough in terms of power to be piled on and by a bunch of like men don't like men can't be piled on by a bunch of women. We don't have that kind of dynamic yet. We might we don't have it. Okay. So take a deep breath and remember that you are living history. And this is where we are. You will tell your nieces and nephews and 50 years from now. Oh, I was there. I was watching Britney Simon stream and we watched Kamala Harris come on to Beyonce. And I was there. I'll tell you, it was really interesting. We watched the first Indian black female president elect or female president running person. Hmm, she's not president elect, but you know what I mean? The first person to run as oh, the first woman, black female Indian woman. I'm going to get it right. One of these days we were there and we saw it happen. And that's important. That's going to be so cool. This is going to be so cool in the future. Like it's going to be so cool in the same way that when my mom goes, Oh, Rosa Parks used to shop at our grocery store. I was like, Rosa Parks did what? When people say, oh yeah, my dad knew Malcolm X. Your dad knew who? It's cool. It's cool. It's cool to be like, oh my God, you're like connected to history. We're all connected to history, girl. We are history. We are history. Oh, yes. Emmy says we're going to get interviewed for school projects. Bro. Isn't that kind of exciting? We are the future. Just kidding. Um, welcome to memberships unknownness. Welcome, welcome. But isn't that kind of exciting? Like we are going to be the people that I think that's why a lot of people like being streamers in some ways, because like we were we were like we were here. We were here. And it's like, yeah, kinda. Like I remember where I was when 9-11 happened. Like I'll never forget my day on 9-11, right? But yeah, like we're here. And in 20 years, we're gonna be the old people that tell young people and like we were here. We know what's going on. And may we grow to adapt and be open and curious and try to stay in touch with the youth as much as possible because, girl, we're getting old. But let's be the adults in the room and give hope to young people. And I said this during my initial coverage of Trump's speech earlier in this morning, and I'll clip it later for you guys. But remember that there are young people watching you and they feel like giving up. So please be the adults in the room and give them a reason to have hope because they're young LGBT and like young, young gay kids watching you right now, young trans kids watching you right now who are thinking, I can't do this. I can't do four years of Trump. I, I don't, I don't, I, I can't be here. You can be here. You deserve to be here. Do not give up because this man was elected president. When there's so much future ahead of you, don't let this man be the, like the thing that your life is revolving around. Okay. So please be the adults in the room. Cause I know my audience is older and please give these kids a reason to stick around one day longer. Okay. Cause they need that. They're really going to need it guys. Unaliving amongst LGBT youth. It's high. And they're going to feel the pressure this next four years. They're going to feel it harder than you're going to feel it. Because they're kids with no resources. They don't have any, any resources. And they're probably sitting in conservative homes feeling isolated. So please be optimistic for them so they can even see or comment on a video or see a post you post and think, okay, I have something to look forward to. I have a queer future to look forward to. I have a freedom to look forward to, okay? Yeah, I'm 